Hello kids, today we'll be talking about the digestion of a chicken sandwich. I'm Dr. Perry. And I'm Professor Stausis. Now, let's begin. First, let's explain a few things. Digestion is the breakdown of food into small particles called molecules. Digestion takes two forms. Mechanical, which is when you chew food in your mouth, and chemical, which is when the larger food molecules are broken down into smaller food molecules through chemical change. Here we have the human body. First stop, the mouth. Digestion starts with a process called ingestion, which is the intake of substances such as food or drink through your mouth. This person will ingest a chicken sandwich called chick, made of bread, chicken, and mayonnaise. The mouth is the beginning of the alimentary canal which is a very long tube that runs from your mouth to your anus, or rear end. In the mouth, chick is bitten by sharp teeth, such as incisors and canines, and is chewed by large, flat teeth called premolars and molars. Chick gets pushed around by the tongue and ends up covered in saliva. Saliva is made from water, mucus, and an enzyme called amylase. Amylase really likes to break down starch, a carbohydrate found in food, such as chick's bread, into maltose, a sugar. Try it. If you keep bread in your mouth for a long time, it will begin to taste sweet. Then, chick, who is partially digested, is bunched together and becomes a ball called a bolus. Next stop, the esophagus. The chicken sandwich bolus moves down this long tube and first meets Mr. Epiglottis. Mr. Epiglottis is a piece of cartilage that controls what substances go to the stomach or to the lungs by covering or opening the entrance to the trachea or windpipe when food comes down. The bolus is pushed down the esophagus through a process called peristalsis, from which our names come from. During peristalsis, the muscles in the esophagus contract and relax to help the bolus move down the alimentary canal until the entrance to the stomach where a sphincter muscle contracts and relaxes to control the passage of food into the stomach. The chick's breakdown, called digestion, takes place in the stomach and duodenum. The stomach contains enzymes like pepsin, but also mucus and hydrochloric acid. Pepsin, a protease, is used to break down proteins, such as chick's chicken, into small protein molecules called peptides, which are made of amino acids. After digestion in the stomach, chick becomes a liquid called chyme. Next stop, the duodenum. Duodenum is the first part of the small intestine, a very long tube. The pancreatic duct is another tube, which goes from the pancreas to the duodenum. It brings pancreatic juice, a fluid made of the enzymes such as amylase, like in the mouth, trypsin, and lipase. Trypsin is a protease like pepsin and will be used to digest the chicken even more. Lipase digests fats or lipids such as chick's mayonnaise. Pancreatic juice also contains bicarbonate, which neutralizes the chyme's acidity to make the enzymes function properly. The duct is yet another tube which brings a fluid called bile to the duodenum. Bile made in the liver is kept in the gallbladder before going to the duodenum. It is made of bile salts, which help break down large fat drops into small droplets to prepare them for digestion by lipase in a process called emulsification. As chick moves along the small intestine, it is exposed to enzymes like maltase, sucrase, lactase, and lipase, which are made by tiny projections called villi. Villi absorb chick's digested nutrients so that they can be used in the body. Blood capillaries take in small molecules such as amino acids from the chicken and sugars from the bread. Lacteals absorb fats digested by lipase. This process is called absorption. Nutrients absorbed by the villi are transported to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. The liver then processes these nutrients by storing excess glucose as glycogen by turning excess amino acids into either urea or carbohydrates through deamination, and by breaking down harmful substances. 
After this processing, blood is transported to the heart so that it can be pumped to the rest of the body. Next stop, the large intestine. This tube is wider, but shorter than the small intestine. This is where unwanted material is processed and becomes feces. Water from this material is absorbed for later use. At the end of the large intestine is the rectum, which stores indigestible food before being excreted through the anus and hopefully into a toilet bowl. This process is called egestion. Overall, the four stages of digestion are ingestion, digestion, absorption, and egestion. The continuous process of digestion. Thanks for watching, kids. Goodbye. Goodbye.